evening, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Business Power Hour with uh, Darren uh, Dimples and the Music Man, me. Hey, Dimps. <laughs> hey, Mr. Music Man. What's How you up? doing How this evening? What's going on? Ooh. How are you? Well, good. What's up? Good. Two lady. This is true story. This two ladies at a network meeting right. came over to me, and uh, he said, no, your show was really good, but we miss Dimples. Good evening, everybody. I just got the finger from Jim. It's all part of the story. Right. Hey everybody, it's Darren from the Business Power Hour. I'm not I'm not gonna be in the studio tonight. I'm traveling. Good evening everybody and welcome to the Business Power Hour with Darren and the music man, except Darren's not here. I'm here. No, no, I'm right not here. here. Do you, do you does anybody see that this, Darren is not here. Darren is away. I, I am right you. here, right here. Quiet next for here. a second, you're not here. Well, 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 I don't know if you got lucky. Not the really interesting question. That's a fantastic question, Norman. Wow. See, I got a fantastic. fantastic. You just got good. I got fantastic. Show's about him, so let's focus on that. Were you drinking before the show? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. There we go. We got it. Let's go. No, it's... Now we got to smother. There you go. Okay. Smother it. So. I think you guys are going to do that. It's making noise. It's making music. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> That's so sweet. That's so sweet of you, Darren. By the way, this is a Yankee uh, station. It's a Thank Yankee you. station. John, Thank it's you. a Yankee station. All right. Unfortunately. We got the, bugs in here. Yeah, what's going on? I don't know. I Do you spray? Know. Get you know exterminated? It's that time of year where you're getting bugs and stuff. As long as we don't have bees, I'm good. Yeah, all right. That's but uh, we have a lot of undulations out in the, the oh. field. Undulations. Is that a wine? So, no, you, what the hell is undulation? Fred, so, Fred don't use big words. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right? <laughs> so this... <laughs> Help. Okay. I, I gotta give him a cough button, Jim. What do you think? A cough because button would be a good idea. Button. Consider that a good question that he asked? Great right question. There you go. There there you go. I got, I got, I got Pythons one. and I, brains. I got, I, You're double D? I'm double D. Show's about him, so let's focus on that. Hey, give me some, give me some, give me some loving. No, how are you, music no. man? Hello, Darren. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm, I'm this absolutely week. convinced. I'm absolutely convinced. I'm that telling you, you got some kind of brain damage when you had that thing last I'm, year. I'm telling you, really? and he called it. It's not classy, but classy. <laughs> Seeing interviews by Darren and the Music Man, ladies and gentlemen, Darren Siafi and Norman Wasserman. Let's do this. Yeah. yeah. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Business Power Hour with Darren and the Music Man. It is Wednesday night, so our little promo is correct. It's Wednesday, except it's wrong when we play it on Mondays when it says this is the Wednesday show. So yes, we do have to record a Monday version. Of well, our intro. Intro. well, we got to do, we got to, we got to refresh the intro anyway, because yeah, it, for a big grand opening for our big re grand, well, re -grand, re -grand opening. opening, right? Also, yeah. I have to answer a question. I, I've been asked twice, coincidentally, this week in our intro, it says, um, Jim just gave me the finger. I have to explain what that is because people thought it was something different. When Jim used to give us the finger means that we were live and we were talking. He wasn't giving us the finger. He was really giving us a finger. And the reason why you said that was because there were a number of times where he, you thought he gave you the finger and you started talking. Exactly. Live yet. So that's that, it. Because he did give me the wrong <laughs> finger and I thought that was the right finger. Right. So. <laughs> Okay, so we, we took care of that. Very special day today, isn't it? Very special day. I want to say happy Veterans Day for well, all our vets. All our vets, you know, those everywhere. Who now, those who have served, those who have died through, I, I, you know, I can't say enough about it. You know how, how you know, near and dear that is to me. So uh, I just want to say happy Veterans Day. And we have a really special show because veterans. we have some veterans on today. Uh, that are going to talk about their experiences and what they do to actually help our existing veterans today. So they got they got a lot of cool stuff coming on. So without further ado, da -da 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 -da. Well, we want to welcome Christina, Cullen, and Mike to the show. They've been on the show before. 
Well, where are they from? Well, that's, that's, you know what? We're going to let them. Colin and Christina are from. Oh, I think, I think I muted everybody again. Hold on. Norman, I muted you. Unmute yourself there, buddy. <laughs> no, that's good. We don't have to hear Norman. Welcome, guys, to the show tonight. We're Thank so you. happy that you're on. You know? Thank you. Thanks so, for having us. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about what you guys are all about, how you help veterans, and why you got into it. Sure. First off, hello, everybody. Um, I got, I, I'm a military vet. I was in the Army from 76 to 79. Um, uh, I've recently become a, a post-service officer for the American Legion, um, helping veterans get veteran services. Um, I'm actually, I, I, I thank Colin and Christina for, for bringing me along into this world. They are the true experts in uh, helping out veterans and have been doing this for a long time with Advocate Health. I'll let them talk on that. But uh, uh, between Medicare and veteran services uh, benefits, I do everything I can to help veterans get uh, the benefits they deserve, even though they don't realize they deserve it and are entitled to it. So before we go on to Christina and, <coughs> excuse me, Colin, the reason why you became an officer in American Legion in this unit is really because of me and Darren. Yeah, if you remember at the <laughs> last time that you guys were on, we had the officials on here and then we kind of like pushed and they said they had a position open and then Darren and I did, we got the guy right here. And then lo and behold, you're yeah, in. Absolutely. Christina got me into the Legion. Thank God. She gave me the rules and regulations that allowed me to join. And then you guys just pushed me right into being That's a service it. officer. So you yes, I have everybody to think on this show. Yeah. That's it. Real. Yes. Many the, wings. The things we, we, we can get done there. Amazing. Amazing. Mike, we, we thank you for your service. Colin, tell us a little bit about you and how you got involved with this, with what you guys are doing. Because you guys, you guys offer services, right, to the vets. Sure. I know you're American Legion, Mike, and Colin, you know, tell us a little bit about you and how you're involved. Well, uh, Christine and I work for Advocate Health Advisors. It's a veteran-owned and operated company. Our, our founder and uh, is Darwin Hale. He's a retired army colonel. I actually served with Darwin for many years. And as I began to look at what I would do in a, a career after the military, uh, he, he put this opportunity to me about, you know, a way to help our veterans figure out how to one, access their VA benefits. VA benefits are tremendously underutilized. And then how to make sure they find the, the right Medicare fit. And we work with thousands of agents like Mike. I guess I'll, I'll caveat that by saying there's no one like Mike. But uh, we work with thousands of agents across the country, and uh, Christina is uh, the brains behind the entire operation. She <laughs> she keeps she keeps us all in line, and uh, and we we make sure that veteran benefit part is maximized, and then we fill it in with a, a great plan that's offered by many carriers. We we carry about forty different carriers across the nation, so I, I love what we do for our veterans. It makes a huge life saving, money saving impact on hundreds and hundreds of veterans. Well, I do have to admit that Christina is definitely, I agree with you totally. She is definitely the brains behind oh, all of this. Oh, yes. There's oh, no, yes. There is no question on that. I mean, all of all us guys will agree that you're the bomb. The you were the bomb, Christina. And that leads us right into you, the best of the last. Tell us how you got involved in this. Are you a veteran or are you, you know, how did, how did you get involved with this organization? Well, um, actually, I am the daughter of a Vietnam veteran, and uh, he has dedicated his life, my dad, um, to helping veterans. Uh, so ever since I was little, um, that has been his mission, was what could he do next to help a veteran, whether it was legislative or it was hands-on. Um, and about five years ago, I got involved in our American Legion uh, Homeless Veterans Program, so Pennsylvania American Legion Housing for Homeless Veterans Corporation, and uh, we support veterans who are homeless and help them get back on their feet. Um, so I had been part of that program uh, directly for about five years, and then I had also worked in home health and hospice care 
and started doing education in the community um, and ran into actually Sean McGinty, who is a Navy veteran, and he connected me with Cullen. And they asked if I'd be interested in joining. And I said, what could I possibly love more than being able to help veterans every day? So here I am, I'm very glad to be here. So we, we're glad you're here also, Christina. She put that so nicely. We actually stalked her. <laughs> is, is that what it is? You hunted her down? We, we, have... look, we look for people who are so dedicated in the community and we, we stalked Christina for months and we were at dinner and she says, you know, I just wish I had more time to do this. I said, if you only work someplace that you could have more time to do this. So, uh, yeah, she's amazing. I have to say that the last time uh, you were all on, you had Christina, your dad was on and we had some of the other people that are involved. What a wonderful group of people. And we also had the owner of the company on the show and, and, right. and reach wise, it was one of the best shows that we have ever had. I know, I know Mike takes the credit for that, but I have to say that it was the other people <laughs> that were on the show as well. Well, I tell you what, Mike always gets good numbers when he's on the show. He Six numbers. He's like, he like rocks the show. He really does. He's numbers. so well liked and so knowledgeable of what it is, the Medicare world and so on. In fact, I, I had spoken to him earlier today and I said, you know, in all due respect, and I know this is your livelihood, I am so sick and tired of seeing the Medicare commercials that are really not even true that are online. Maybe you can address some of that stuff and, and, and tell us really what the, what the real thing is. Yes, I would love to. That, those commercials bug the hell out of me. Um, while they, they are somewhat factual and people are entitled to all those benefits you're hearing about on those commercials, if you don't have both Medicare and Medicaid, you're not going to get those benefits. You're, you're, they're very deceiving, those ads. And it's a shame that many beneficiaries think, oh, I'm going to call, I'm going to get these benefits, thank God, and they're happy. And then they're let down when they're asked, do you have your state Medicaid? And they say, no, well, we can't offer you those products. That is a terrible form of advertising. It's insulting to us in the business that are legitimate Medicare representatives. And I'm sorry that those commercials are on TV and in the numbers they're in. And I wish something could be done about it because that is false advertising in my book. Do they charge for this service? No, they're, what they are is they're agents like us. They just, they're not, they're, they don't have scruples. <laughs> That's the best way I could put it. They're looking to get people to call. And if they don't write the business, they don't write the business. It's a numbers game for them. Uh, to us, it's, it's, it's all about the beneficiary. It's not about the numbers. The numbers, if you do it the right way, the numbers will be there. You don't need to do this crazy stuff and false advertising to get numbers if you do it the right way. So those, those ads are largely geared towards telesales. And uh, yeah. you know, the one thing I would say with, you know, when you buy a policy from Mike, you, you've got a local representative. I mean, good luck getting Joe Namath to return your call to, to, <laughs> answer, to answer your prescription question. So I, I, that's when it's my turn to buy, I'm going to buy for somebody exactly like Mike, where I pick up the phone and say, hey, why is this doctor not in network anymore? Or, they got Joe they, Feisman now doing it too. Yeah, they yeah. got them all. Yeah, good luck getting any of them to call you back. So that, that's not really what we want. We, you want that local agent. They know the networks. They know the doctors. They know the area. Uh, that, that's just irreplaceable. So. Well, it's not only that. You know, Mike also knows not only the network of, of, of thing, the doctors, everybody that you're talking to, but he also knows the VA reps that actually can help the veterans get benefits that they have every right to, right? Oh, oh, yes. Now, Mike is, uh, you know, my, my terminology is he's a unicorn with a unicorn in his pocket. Uh, you know, he he not only knows the Medicare piece inside and out, but he knows the VA piece as well. And the, the faces and places to put with all those to, to really do the magic of our veterans initiative to, to put the two systems together, because those systems don't talk. You have to have somebody like Mike that says, do this here, do that there. You know, this will work out for a good rounded plan for you. Mike is revered, literally. I don't know whether you know it or not. In in the Long Island area, and that's the only place I can speak with speak of. He is revered in what it is that he does. He really is that that guru, that genius, that savant that we talked about earlier. He he is the guy. Why why aren't 
um, vets educated when they leave the service on all the benefits and such? Because I have some friends that um, that I'm involved with at, at work that were in the service, were in Desert Storm, got hurt, came out, and was not not educated at all on the availability of services for him. Is it changed over the years? Dramatically, yeah, yes, dramatically. They have programs in every branch now where you go through an entire gauntlet of activities before you leave. They, they have someone who comes in with resume writing. Uh, when I went through a few years ago, there was even a guy that came in from Men's Warehouse to, to help you with fashion for eating how to buy. So that, they run the gamut on it now, but that wasn't the case uh, in the in the mid to late seventies when a lot of the veterans were getting back from Vietnam that Mike and I are running into and Christina and I are running to in this industry. I mean, they couldn't even wear their uniforms home. Uh, they were uh, subject to lots of protest and, you know, people spitting on them and stuff like that. So it definitely was a different experience to get out of the military at the time that our Medicare age veterans were getting out of the military as versus when I did and, and probably Mike did as well. Uh, so we, it's gotten much better. And, you know, when you get out and you get that briefing, you could be as young as 37 years old and retire from the military. That's a long time between 37 and 65 to forget all those yeah. things that you got in that exit briefing. So, uh, and we love to help with that piece as well. So how can veterans get a hold of you guys to, to find out this information or even just to get a hold of you to find out what you offer and how you offer it? I'll go first, if you don't mind. Um, always reach out to me. My phone number is 631-392-8268. That's 631-392-8268. Um, my email, askmedicaremike at gmail.com. I have a website, uh, uh, medicaremikeny.com. Uh, Facebook, Ask Medicare Mike. Um, any veteran, anybody, reach out to me. Um, I am in the midst of helping five separate veterans right now, uh, three of which with the Suffolk County Veterans uh, uh, veteran Service Officers. One's a, a Korean vet, Korea War vet. One's a Vietnam vet. And one is a Gulf War vet. None of them knew that they were entitled to benefits. The Korean War vet has full VA medical and prescription, has skin cancer from Korea that is constantly evolving uh, and doesn't get a dime. And now the veteran service officer in the county is making sure that that's taken care of. There's, what kind of money is he entitled to? I mean, um, is this significant? I mean, you guys suffering, is, is it significant? The, the, the amount hasn't been determined yet. Colin and Christina could possibly talk on more on the generalities of the, the, the payouts. Uh, I'm, I'm at the basis where I'm referring them to the county uh, and the process is new. But Colin and Christina, can you add to that? Well, the, those guys are the experts. So Mike is exactly right. We want to link veterans up with someone who does this full time for a living, accredited, has access to the system to upload documents. So uh, we really uh, value those relationships that we build with service officers. And, and I'll let Christina add on to that. She just recently went through a reaccreditation. So it's very important that, uh, that you get a veteran connected with a veteran service officer. Number one, as Colin said, that's their full-time responsibility is to assist the veteran, get them the benefits that they deserve. They're accredited uh, through the VA uh, so they go through extensive education and training to make sure that they understand the ins and outs of uh, preparing a claim. They also are knowledgeable about how to go through an appeal process if it comes to that point. So having that connection with that individual and the most important part of it is besides getting that veteran connected with that veteran service officer and building that relationship with them, they are also do not understand Medicare. So they're gonna be able to look at you as somebody who can help put the pieces together and make that bridge for veterans so that they can understand how both of these systems can work together. So they can end up ultimately with, uh, you know, coordinated care through both the VA and their Medicare. Well, how does somebody get in touch with these um, advisors? Is there another phone number or something where they can do that? Or is it, it is this a calling advocate where they can get the information? 
Sure, and I'll let Christina give our information for advocate, but these service officers are, are located in counties and states. Now, not all of them have them, but you can start. I know in your area, uh, Norm, you guys have them, you know, Suffolk County and Nassau County Veterans Services Offices. Right. Uh, those are very well staffed. Uh, those people are the experts in that field. And, and that holds true to, to any county. And Mike is like the, uh, you know, the Attila the Hunt of the insurance world. He's in about you 17 think? states now. <laughs> So Mike has had to search for veteran services officers all up and down the East Coast and, and starting to work his way west. But uh, just just start with the name of your county, Smith County Veteran Services Office. It's going to take you to some sort of government building and uh, and those guys. And then there's also some at uh, volunteer service organizations I can let Chris talk to. Okay, so uh, I, we got a few questions from our audience. So we got okay. Brandon, Brandon Herndon in Texas uh, who thinks you guys are the bomb. All right. Uh, you say she's from she's from Texas? Yeah, Brandon Herndon from Texas. Okay. Nice. Uh, he thinks Christine and Colin are a bomb. But he, he wants to know how much does it cost veterans to access their VA benefits? This is actually a free service to veterans. Veterans should never have to pay to receive their VA benefits. It's actually um, a mandate by the VA and by the government that a veteran not be charged for those services and that somebody can actually get into trouble um, financially, uh, be fined if they are charging a veteran for those services. Um, so it's important that a veteran knows that. Uh, through different um, veteran service organizations, uh, they will be accredited on the VA website uh, so you can find them there. Um, that's another place that you can locate them. But uh, yes, they can, um, they have to make sure they're getting connected with that veteran service officer. Okay. And that was a very common thing, uh, you know, borderline, well, I don't know if it's borderline predatory uh, activity by people charging veterans to do something that their tax funded uh, veteran services officer in their community that they've already paid for will do for them for free or full-time employees of organizations such as the American Legion that have people on staff that will also assist them for that for free. And there, there are people out there in the community that have in the past charged for that. And up until what, Chris, like 18 months, two years ago, that was legal. And then there, there were some changes made that made that illegal, punishable by fine up to $10,000. And, uh, and the word has just not gotten out about that. So, you know, if you find people like that, uh, we need to know about it to help get them, you know, for one, they may not know. Uh, and if they, they do knowingly do that, then that is a crime. Okay. Joanne, Joanne French, right, wants to know how to get an Advantage plan if she also uses the VA and why I would want to add that instead of just using the VA. I'll take care of that. Um, the VA works hand in hand with Medicare. You can have both services. Um, so if, you, if you're a veteran or you have a family member that's a veteran and has VA hospital benefits, medical benefits, VA prescription drug benefits, um, that's great. But what happens if you can't make it to the VA hospital or clinic? What happens if um, an emergency arises and you don't wanna go to the emergency room, but you need maybe need to get to an urgent care center um, or you want to get a second opinion outside of the VA for a condition that you've been diagnosed with, uh, met, the Medicare plans can help you with that. Um, there are some plans out there uh, that will actually give you part of your Part B premium back, um, uh, thereby saving you some money, also giving you some over-the-counter goods uh, on a quarterly basis or a monthly basis. Transportation. A lot of times, some vets can't get transportation to and from uh, the doctors or the, the hospital. These plans will provide it in addition to the VA benefits they get, and oftentimes with a zero additional premium. So they're, they're, if they're not taking advantage of the opportunity to protect themselves, it's, it's a mistake on their part. Uh, and it's a great product, and it works hand in hand with all the VA benefits that they may have or will be entitled to after talking to us. That transportation hey, benefit you, on some Mike. of those plans can be used to transport that veteran to the VA. Uh, you know, these, these companies, they want that total package of that veteran 
to be you know healthy. So if you're getting transportation to a VA facility for service that the, these civilian insurance companies, they look at that as a win because they're keeping you healthier. Right. And that, that is one of the primary reasons also that veterans miss appointments at the VA is a lack of transportation. So Mike's yeah. exactly right. So, so they, they have the ability to get this and not have to worry about getting there to and from. Correct. Now, not every plan has that in it, but that, that's why it's important to work with somebody like Mike so he can look across all the different plans that he carries and find the one that's the, the fit for that veteran. So we know we know Mike is now in multiple states, but if I'm a veteran and I want to find somebody in my local community like Mike, is there a way that you guys have a network set up where I can contact you and find out who that person is? And if so, how do I go about doing that? Sure, I'll, I'll let Chris do that because she sort of manages our database of those agents that have been trained. See, she does everything. She, she does. Care. I, I told you, she's, she's the boss. Man, what the hell are you guys doing? You're doing nothing. <laughs> well, thank you, Colin. You uh, definitely undersell yourself. So um, as far as getting in touch with us, uh, we do have a website, advocateforveterans.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Uh, they can reach us at our um 1-800 number, 1-800-709-5513. Uh, and a veteran has any questions about their benefits um, and getting them set up with a Medicare plan in another area. Um, not sure if Colin wants to give out his information, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, his number is 704-620-4646. Uh, and my number is 412 779-7407. And we work very closely uh, with our agents to make sure that they know, like Mike and being an expert in this field, uh, being able to help the veterans across the country. Okay, we're gonna take a very short break. And when we come back, we got some more questions for you guys. It's actually, I mean, we got a ton of great questions out here tonight. So I'm looking forward to uh, answering those when we come back. We'll be back in just a minute. Robin Williams Tribute Experience. Hello, I'm Robin Williams. Hello, I'm Robin Williams. <laughs> Hello, I'm Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah, baby. Wow. <laughs> wow, yeah. Best new act of the year since the New York Post. Whoa, look at this! <laughs> welcome, welcome to Donald Trump's bathroom! Amy Variety says, an astonishing Robin Williams impressionist. Ah, ah, ah. I know what you're thinking. Crazy. Ah. Right? Newsday says, he's the closest thing to Robin Williams. Uh, I'm gonna run, and you, and you shoot me, okay? Here we go. Oh, 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 you nailed my ass again. And now you can be part of the ultimate Robin Williams tribute experience. A winner with audiences coast to coast. From the Legends of Comedy. Have you lost control of your business? This is business consultant Darren Sayafi. Listen to me every Monday at 3 p.m. as we discuss strategies and solutions where you can regain control. That's every Monday at 3, starting September 14th, right here on LI News Radio. All right, and we are back to the Business Power Hour with Darren and the Music Man, and we have some tremendous guests here tonight Christina, experts, Cullen, Mike. Experts. Experts and experts and experts. Uh, we got a, we got a question from Brad Gibson. And I think it's a, it's a really good question. Does my dad's VA coverage give enough coverage for him? And can he go anywhere with his VA card? Who's going to take that? Chris, you want to take that one? Okay. You might sure. as well, Chris, you're taking everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with the VA coverage, so first of all, he is limited when he's not using his Medicare benefit, but with the VA, it is a uh, not only nationally, but anywhere that uh, there is a VA hospital um, in any of the U.S. territories, he'd be able to use his VA card. 
but it does limit him in not getting those benefits that he does not get through the VA. So I'd still highly suggest for him to sit down with one of our agents and look at his VA benefits and how to coordinate that with Medicare. Okay, so you have another question for Christina? Okay, so what are, what are and, and this is Brandon now, Brandon Hurden, who asked the question before, you know, what are FQHCs and how should agents approach the entities? Federal Qualified Health Centers are FQHSs. They are um, centers where um, low-income uh, people go to for health care uh, and oftentimes do not realize that they are entitled to Medicare or have the wrong plan and nobody wants to talk to them. And they're, they are um, a great source to help uh, them out with their health care uh, and getting them better coverages. That is another one of the areas where we target to try and have agents to build a partnership there because you do, you need an agent that has that expertise instead of someone just kind of giving well-intended advice and uh, pairing the right plan with someone who uses FQHC is a great thing. So how do they find an F FQHC? If, if I'm, you know, how, how do I find that? I'm, I'm a veteran, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Call the VA How, how can I locate, locate a place like that? Well, and those are two separate systems. I mean, FQHCs are just community-based uh, health centers that are out there not associated with the VA. And, uh, but, but we, Advocate has probably 80 different initiatives that we go after. FQHCs is one of them. So if anyone's having trouble finding any FQHC, the 1-800 number that Christina gave a moment ago, they can call that. We'll help link them up with that. Uh, just like we do our veterans with finding uh, the veteran equivalent of that would be a community-based outpatient clinic, a CBOP. Okay, now I'm going to make a suggestion. Next time that you folks come on, I think you should make up some sort of like a flyer type paper with all these phone numbers, because no one's going to remember all these numbers that you're putting, that you're putting out there. And um, maybe if we had like a, a flyer space on here with all the categories, it would be easier for people to go and do it. Love it. Okay. Okay. I want to do a couple more shout outs. We got uh, Gerald Schwartz uh, is watching us tonight. Elise Thielen. A felon. I'm, I'm sorry, Elise, if I'm saying your name wrong. James Martinez is on, uh, you know, plus many, many, many others. So, you know, we want to say thank you and happy Veterans Day to all of these people. Uh, it seems like we got a great core of veterans with us today. Mike, let me ask you uh, a question. What is your recommendation? I know you, and you are you are Medicare, Mike. You know Medicare backwards, forwards, sideways. You know, Colin, you alluded before that, you know, somebody could be 37 years old and retire from the military. And, you know, now what, right? When it comes to healthcare and that. And they got VA benefits, but they may be limited. Are there other programs that you guys have to help fill in the gap? for the veterans who are not Medicare or Medicaid age? Uh, um, the states have programs. Um, we can only work with those that have uh, Medicare, the Medicare card uh, to help them with their with the health benefits or help them get VA benefits. Um, when it comes to those that aren't Medicare eligible, um, Obamacare, the, the state exchanges, unfortunately, are the only places as of now that, you, that an individual can go and get uh, health care, oftentimes subsidized, uh, but it's through the states or through the federal exchanges. Christina, I, I got a question for you. Something just happened to hit me and it kind of like bothered me. Um, let's say I'm a vet. For some reason, I've never married. I don't have kids or whatever. Or my, I did marry and my wife's deceased and I have no place to live. And I know that you work with the homeless and so, but it, uh, how do you find these people? Do they find you? Do they get recommended? How do you help them? Uh, in Pennsylvania and actually across the country, each VA has their VA homeless program. 
and they have a whole team uh, that are social workers um, and case managers that are dedicated to uh, placing veterans um, in either homeless programs that might be in their area uh, or um, trying to find shelters for them. Um, there are uh, opportunities for them to get, uh, to get grants for housing. So they'll sit down with them. Uh, they'll go through their different options, uh, but a veteran can reach out to their VA at any time that they feel that they're at risk of becoming homeless uh, and find out what kind of um, options they may have available to them. But that is something I know the VA as well as the government uh, was trying to tackle uh, across the country. Is the VFW affiliated with um, your organization as well? Um, the VFW is not part of the American Legion, but they are a veteran service organization. Right. So there are many veteran service organizations dedicated to helping veterans across the country. Again, you can find them oftentimes on the VA website. Um, sometimes you can Google them. Uh, sometimes they're just, uh, it's based on the territory. So they may cover several counties within a state, but they may not do anything outside of that area. So um, the best way to find those, again, are by reaching out to either your VA. Um, if you have challenges with that, you know, you can also um, get in touch with your local American Legion or VFW or one of those service organizations that are well known and ask them if they know of any resources. So a lot more opportunities opportunity for veterans to get assistance now than many years ago. If I can add, um, especially to those veterans that are not a member of, a, of an organization like the American Legion, um, you may be missing the boat. Um, there is a lot of great information, a lot of great programs that American Legion in particular offer to veterans. Um, and, and it's unfortunate, especially the younger veterans um, many of them are not part of the American Legion for many different reasons, but I, I urge you to reconsider because you are you can get a wealth of knowledge just simply by being a member of the American Legion, um, and, and get a lot of uh, a lot of help, a lot of friends, a lot of people that can help you. Um, and a lot of times veterans think, well, I, I'm not going to do it because I want to save it for somebody else, whether it be applying for VA benefits or simply becoming a member of an organization. Uh, it's a mistake. Um, please reach out. Um, the organization is there to help you. You're going to help the organization at the same time, or you're going to benefit from the VA benefits. And at the same time, you're helping the budget uh, for the VA getting more money by becoming active and becoming uh, having a claim filed in your name with the VA. When I'm a vet and I did a tour of duty, and uh, let's say the tour of duty is, is it two years or four years, whatever the number happens to be. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I leave the service versus someone who's spent 20 years in the service. Is there a different category of benefits that you're entitled to? Or is everybody entitled to the same benefits? No, no, it's different. Uh, so the, when you do 20 years or otherwise retired, you could become injured while you're in service and have to be medically retired. Uh, you'll get a product uh, or a service from that is TRICARE. Uh, and you'll get a product that turns, when you turn 65, is TRICARE for life. And, and we work a lot with that piece of it. If you do uh, less than 20 or do not retire, then you would have to access your VA benefits. Uh, what does that. TRICARE for life mean? Uh, TRICARE for Life uh, functions as wraparound coverage that pairs with either original Medicare or an Advantage plan. And we, uh, we encounter that a lot. Uh, for a long time in the industry, uh, insurance agents were told to leave people alone on TRICARE for Life. And should have really been says, leave people alone if you don't know what you're doing. And I don't mean that in, in a condescending way, but you can cause problems in a, a veteran's health care if you don't instruct them. Uh, the proper way. And we, we spend countless hours with our agents uh, in seminars and ride-alongs and one-on-one -on -one training 
to make sure they know how to advise a veteran how they can actually pair uh, something other than original Medicare with TRICARE, CHAMP, VA, uh, et cetera. So you can pair the Advantage plan with TRICARE? Absolutely. And uh, you can't it be done the right way. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's absolutely no reason that you can't do that. You just have to discuss with the veteran, you know, here's a couple things that are going to be different now. And here's one step you're either going to have to discuss with your doctor or you're either you're going to have to take yourself. But veterans are no different than anyone else. You can't have a Medicare Advantage plan on the market unless it has everything that original Medicare has and more. So why would any veteran uh, not be able to take advantage of the end more? Uh, they're especially like Mike mentioned it. There's some places uh, in, in the country that have a hundred and forty something dollar give back. And what I mean by that is that that Part B premium that comes out of Social Security, you can get most, if not all of that back. And, uh, and there, there are certain carriers across the country that have really led the way. Uh, one in particular, every plan they have has a give back. Every plan they have uh, has a zero premium in, in the space of, of the veterans plans. Okay. Are the veterans plans the only Medicare plans that have a give back? Oh, no. No, the, the give back is, has become more and more prevalent. The zero premium plan has become more and more prevalent. Uh, and you're seeing in the industry, uh, the, the market's basically divided into thirds. You have a third of the market that's on original Medicare only. You have another third of the market that has put a supplement with that, which that sort of, they're, they're more expensive and they sort of back clean up on everything that original Medicare doesn't cover. And then you've got a third of the market that has started to use Advantage plans. And that's sort of more of an a la carte instead of buying the whole buffet like you would with a supplement. That is the third that's growing right now. Uh, people are looking at the math of it and they're like, why would I pay $4,000 a year for something I can pay zero every month and 10 bucks every time I go to the doctor, for example. And, and every plan varies, but uh, that's becoming a much more, uh, I'd say frugal decision that people are making and for those that are on original Medicare, um, I lived that with my mother the last three years of her life. And we spent tens of thousands of dollars that, that were just, she got the care that she needed, but we, we spent money that was just needless. Uh, I, I wish that someone had, we do have rules in the Medicare Advantage space where you can't go out and door knock. Uh, and I, I wish that someone had knocked on my door and said, hey, do you know what an Advantage plan is? Why, why is that? Yeah, I was just going to say the same Why is that? Why can't you go say, hey, I can help you? Oh, it, it's the nature of every rule that exists, whether it was, you know, put up the kickballs after kickball practice. Somebody screwed something up. You, you've got some crook out there that's gone and knocked on somebody's door and strong armed Mr. and Mrs. Jones into signing an application. So it's the same people that have been screwing it up for us since kindergarten have done the same thing in this industry. So, uh, and that, that's why, you know, you have to find a reputable agent uh, like Mike Brothers out there to make sure they're taking care of your, uh, taking care of your decisions. These are very important decisions. The first veteran, Christina, and I ever helped in this industry, we saved him $35,000 his first year. Uh, so, so there is a significant impact to the difference that you can make in a veteran's life by showing them the way to do these things properly. What makes Mike as good as he is? I don't know if I could find out, I'd bottle it and I would ship it out like well, five. Let's find out for sure. Mike, yes. What makes you as good as you are? I have the passion to learn and know everything there is to know so I can be the best at what I do. Show off. He is. Uh, he is. Education. I constantly self educate myself in this. You also have a very big heart. When people get to know you and know you, you really do love what it is that you do i do and the people and the people that you service and that that's worth everything we have any more call-ins any more any more questions well i mean that's you know other than john from hazlitt being a wise guy uh you know he's our resident wise guy he's our resident wise guy he wants to know if the fake air force thing i'm in counts and, and john <laughs> no i don't get veterans benefits even though i am in the air force auxiliary and we are part of the first air force so uh, I don't get, I, unfortunately, I don't get the benefits. Only if I get hurt on a mission and I get, uh, you know, covered by the insurance. 
I, I would like to add one thing, if I may, uh, 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 about a veteran I'm helping. And it goes a little bit to the housing question. Um, housing is a very difficult thing, especially out here in New York area. Um, uh, I have a veteran I'm working with. Um, actually, I, his, the wife called me as a referral for Medicare. And when I got there, I found out that her husband is a Vietnam vet, early onset dementia. Um, they went to State Senator Gillibrand's office to try to get VA benefits. And while the state senator's office tried their best, um, it was unfortunately they were given misinformation or were told that there was nothing that can be done. Um, and so I listened and I'm going to be honest from that meeting, I called Cullen uh, that night because it's something just didn't ring true to my ears. Um, and, and lo and behold, all that was needed was a doctor to state uh, and believe that the dementia was uh, set on by PTSD while in the service. Uh, and there's no doubt that that was the case here. All this guy, when anybody, his wife ever talks to him, I had to feed a lot of kids. There was a lot of shooting. He, he just won't uh, talk about what went on in Vietnam. All he keeps saying is how he had to feed the kids. Um, and that was a, a significant sign in itself. And sure enough, after I went to the veteran service officer in the county, um, they went to the doctor. Doctor gave the letter. They're working on getting him a massive amount of benefits that he wasn't getting before, including because of the dementia. If, it's, if they agree that it was caused by PTSD, when it comes time that he can't live at home anymore, the VA is going to provide a home for this gentleman. And these are the little things that just people just poo poo and say, I, there's nothing we can do for you. And there really is. VA is absolutely unparalleled on service connected injury. Absolutely. Hands down. You've got, a, you've got a commercial there that would probably help a lot of people. If you could maybe get um, put those people on camera and they could say how you tr how you help them. I mean, this is legitimate help. This is serious no. stuff. And he's not the only one. There no. are a lot of people out there like that. What a great selling point. I mean, you can't walk into somebody's house and say, by the way, I did this for so and so. But if those people actually said something, you know, nice testimonial. How, how nice though. I mean, I know it's tough to ask something like that, but mm. you're really helping, you're helping these people. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what happened to your volume, Norman, but it went down. It's Darren, he, he, every time I get on a roll or something, he doesn't like it. He turns me off. That, oh yeah. It's not me. I, you know what? If I had the norm filter. Yeah, all of a sudden now, I, you know, I'm talking about something serious here, and he turns me down. It does it all. He so he, oh, unbelievable. Maybe that was a different finger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah, he's in the chat box going, "Watch this." <laughs> and there I go. It, it was definitely a different finger on it. So one more time, guys, if people want to get a hold of you, how how yeah, can give all seventeen phone numbers now? So. We <laughs> And the website is the easiest to remember, advocateforveterans.com. Spell out the word for. Uh, that, that'll get you to us. We, we've got a take the quiz section on there, Advocate for Veterans on our Facebook page. We've got contact links on there. And uh, and you can, of course, always call the one 800 number, but probably the simplest way, you can remember advocateforveterans.com. And, and I love the name of our company because it's what we do. We, we do. We, You're you know, an advocate. We, yeah, we do. Simple. Yep. And for me, you can always reach me at 631-392-8268, 631-392-8268. Uh, askmedicaremike at gmail.com, medicaremikeny.com, or Ask Medicare Mike on Facebook. Yeah, I got that all memorized now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this has been this good. We won't get that. I, okay, we got one more question that we, we got. We got a few, we got a couple more minutes. So, Okay, so Brad Gibson says, my wife's mother is on CHAMP VA and recently been looking at Advantage. Any advice? 
Oh, absolutely. This is just like TRICARE question, very similarly related to that. TRICARE and CHAMP VA are secondary payers. Uh, the first payer traditionally has been original Medicare and then CHAMP VA and TRICARE pick up the rest. Uh, there's absolutely no reason a CHAMP VA member should not take advantage of those things that are offered as additional benefits that you have in an Advantage plan. The one thing you do want to be careful with with CHAMP VA is they have a wonderful drug plan. Uh, no donut hole, and I, I won't even go into that explanation. That's like a Medicare pit. But no donut hole, no premiums, no co-pays. They, they have a great coverage. Uh, if you put them on another drug plan, that will kick them out of that. So we do want to focus with a CHAMP VA recipient. We want to make sure they get on what's called a Medicare Advantage only instead of a Medicare Advantage with prescription drug. Uh, but once again, they get, they get to take advantage of those. Many of those are zero premium. They have a Part B give back transportation, dental, which they don't have, hearing, vision, all these things that they don't have. So absolutely no reason that they shouldn't be able to pair that with that. Darren, where was that person from? Uh, Brad Gibson didn't say. Because oh, I thought maybe it might be a good idea for Brad to get a hold of Mike and maybe Mike could help him out. Yeah, Brad, reach out to Mike. I mean, Mike, you know, he's got, you, what is it, like 61 states now that you're in? <laughs> <laughs> New York, New Jersey, can, uh, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, uh, Georgia. I think it was like 17. You know, I think all He's everywhere. He's everywhere. More to come. He's a non-resident license away from being everywhere. That's, That's it. Why he's not he's not ever home. Never. He's either hanging out at Walmart, you know, with his fan. He's got fan club now. The Mike Medicare fan club. They just they, they find out where he's going to be. They just hang out with him. Crazy. Hey. Have Medicare will travel. And any any last words, Mike, that you have for everybody? Uh, just that uh, for for those that aren't veterans, your uh, normal uh, term to to enroll for next year ends December seventh. Veterans who have veteran benefits, including prescription drugs, have an all year round enrollment period. Um, so don't think that because it's not the annual enrollment period, you're shot, shut down. You're not. Um, so please, any veteran, please give me a call. Let's discuss if you have Medicare. Uh, I do want to mention, and I want Christine to actually elaborate on this because she is working hard on this. Um, we are looking to do a, with Norman, a tribute concert for the veterans uh, better benefiting the state chapters of the American Legion. Um, and oh, that's great. I, yes, I'd like to have Christina talk a little bit more about that. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so in partnership um, with you and uh, with Norman and the rest of the team there, we are looking to host a, uh, a concert, virtual concert, uh, that will raise money uh, to support our veterans through uh, the American Legion. There are so many programs uh, that each state is involved in, as Mike had talked about earlier, for both uh, youth as well as families, supporting homelessness, um, supporting education. So there's so many programs that each state wants to help uh, to get through some of these difficult times and even their own posts. Uh, so we look forward to having um, some more information on this. We're looking at springtime uh, to host this like February, March-ish. And uh, as soon as we get that information, we'll be sure to share it. Uh, but this is a, an opportunity to uh, make a difference. So um, for our veterans and we look you, forward you have, to being part of that. Do you have a time frame when you're gonna, when you wanna put this uh, concert on? Uh, I think February or March is what we were looking at, um, probably closer to March to give us enough time to get the advertising out there and uh, have a nice attendance. I think oh, we could I really would, draw some attendance. I would be honored to do that for you. That yeah, these great. organizations have been hit so hard in their fundraising efforts. Uh, the, the wonderful things that they do for our veterans, uh, that they lack the resources to be able to do that, that they were pre-COVID. So. Norman, I can't thank you enough for that. That, that will make I such like, a I have one contingency on it, though. I have one contingency that Mike has to host. 
<laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna put him in a sequin jacket. <laughs> well, that's my jacket. You can't wear my jacket. Oh yeah, he'll, he'll I don't, be like I don't mini think, me. I, I don't think we'll my match. Yeah, yeah. Jacket on. I would need two of Norman's jackets, maybe yeah, three. Gonna, Norman's think... getting to the point where Norman needs two of Norman's jackets. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right, guys. Well, we want to thank you for being on tonight. It was, you know, great bunch of information. We got some great questions. I hope anybody who has seen this tonight, reach out to Colin, Christina, and Mike if you can. If not, find somebody in your local community that can help you because it's so important. And it's there, guys. It's there for the taking. Every veteran has the opportunity to take advantage of this stuff. Regardless if when you got out, you, nobody told you about it or not, you still have the right to all of this, you know, uh, support. It's out there. Go get it, you know, and, and if not, find somebody who can help you get it. And Mike and Colin and Christina dedicate their life to helping you in that respect. So, and um, also for that. If you want to reach Darren or reach me, because you can't reach anybody from Advocate or you can't reach Michael, you call us, you can call me at 631-698-9696, real simple number, 631-698-9696, or you can call Darren at? You can call me at 631-721-4347, at 631-721-4347. And then we'll lead you, we'll make sure that we, we get a hold of somebody for you. Right, we'll, we'll get you in touch with the right people. All right? Thank you. Well, well, you and I are good guys, aren't we? You and I. Be they good. are. Yeah, you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank <yourself>. you. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for being on. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Thanks Thank for having you. Us. Happy Veterans Day, everyone. Thanks. You too. Thank you. Have a nice Thanksgiving. You too. All right. What uh, a nice show. What a great show. A great Boy, did that fly by. As always. They always fly by. Really, fly by. So, uh, you know, nice interaction. Yeah, great interaction. So this Saturday night, November fourteenth. Oh, let me ask you, how was your birthday yesterday? I forgot to ask you. Oh, fine. I I made it to the next year, and hopefully I'll make it to the next year. Uh, I was with my grandkids on Sunday, all seven of them, and my you know my daughters and my son-in-laws, and we had dinner, and it was all really really nice. Good. And I don't get to see them too much because of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it, that was a special occasion. I, I re reached a, um, a high point age-wise so far. I'm okay. looking to uh, yeah, surpass well, everybody every, else. Every day goes by, you hit, you hit a high point. I'm sorry? I said every day that goes by, you hit a high point in your age. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, um, but in my family, people passed relatively young. Okay. So reaching where I'm getting, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good and I'm still active and whatever. So it's all good. Got a lot of nice thank yous. I mean, congratulatory notes from people on Facebook and so on, which I greatly appreciate. I answered every single one of them. You didn't answer mine. I didn't get yours. I sent a happy birthday to you first thing in the morning on Tuesday. Well, it must be at the same place that the Zoom notice goes to. <laughs> it must be. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you very much. I know that your heart was there. I got it. I didn't get a candle this year. That doesn't blow out. Well, like we do. <laughs> not together. Thank God we don't have that candle. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so that's great. I'm going to burn down the new office. That's so it. Monday night, tune in. We have the American Cancer Society yep. that's coming on, right? So who's, who's They're coming on to advertise the show that we're doing for them the following right. week for the Legends of Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So that's coming on. So one of the directors will be here. Uh, actually, I'm putting together now with Chris, I'm putting um, a kind of a little pre-show for Monday night at nine o'clock. We're going to be on, I'm going to send a message out. We're going to have the three stars of the uh, Brooklyn, the Legends of Brooklyn on. We're going to have question and answer period and play some music and uh, to help uh, pick up the sales and get uh, the, the word out. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So everybody have a safe week, you know. Wear your mask, COVID still, yes. you know, it's Stay on the right again. So just be careful out there. Everybody take care of each other. And we will see you Monday night at 7 p.m. Right here on Facebook Live. Everybody have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you.